Yet another Blender conference. So excited. Um, my name is Rick Schutte. I'm the lead animator at the Blender Studio. Um, I started working at Blender during the production of Sprite Fright and had the privilege to direct the latest open movie called Wing It, which is amazing. Woo! Woo! But for today's talk, I would love to dive into facial animation. Um, we'll go over some of the fundamental rules slash guidelines uh, in theory, but I want to jump into Blender as soon as possible. But just to give you guys some, some context on, uh, on what to keep in mind when starting to animate uh, a face. So facial animation. Let's talk about structure, motion, appeal. First, look at that beautiful drawing. Uh, facial structure. Obviously, we have to take into account the skull. And this really depends on what kind of style you're working with. If you work on a, a project that's very cartoony, you get more liberty uh, with, with squash and stretch, with deformation, or if you're animating a squid, you know. Uh, but <clears throat> when you work with more realistic animation, it's uh, very important to keep in mind that there is a skull. So uh, also for the riggers out here, whenever you animate, uh, sorry, uh, rig a, a brow, for example, that it actually slides, and this is fancy, uh, I know, but slides over the, the skull itself and, and maintains the, the structure of, of the actual bones underneath. On top of that, we have the muscles, uh, the facial muscles. Um, all have fancy Latin names, and we don't go too deep into that. But the most important thing is that these muscles are, uh, that you know kind of how they work, and also <clears throat> are aware that they work together. Uh, muscles tend to pull, they all pull. Uh, for uh, example, the frontalis, the big brow muscle, it pulls it up. But as you can see, the angle of that big muscle is slightly tilted. This means that whenever you animate a brow, it not, it's not going straight down, but it always goes in this angle. Uh, and it's not working on its own. It's working together with the corrugator, which is the part that goes in and make a beautiful frown. There's the orbicularis oculi, which is basically the big ring muscle around the eyes. And when you work with a very realistic uh, rig, it's when you squint your eyes, it's not only squinting up and down, but it's also squinting inwards. Now, those, let's go down a little bit. The corrugator, these two guys, they work together with the Levator Labi Superiorius Alec Nasi. So, some scientist wanted his uh, whole family there. But uh, so these, these muscles uh, wanted to. Um, these muscles are actually connected to the, uh, uh, let's call it levator, okay? To the levator. So the corrugator, if you put your fingers here and you sneer, you actually feel them pull down. And this is something to, uh, that, that it's really trying to find those connections and uh, 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 emulate that once you start posing and animating your face. Well, these kind of things, I'm not going over all of them. One of them is the jaws, the mass eater eating mess and um, yeah so so just to cover that keep in mind when animating to have a bit of an anatomical context of, of what you're animating if you're animating a squid it might be different but um, in animation language we mostly talk about just the eye mask and the mouth uh, and keep that consistent but underneath that is the the facial structure so when we raise one brow up the actual uh, corrugator also fires a part of the other brow, which means that we get this uh, connected shape. On top of the muscles is the fat. Um, and volume is something that we ne need to take into account as well, which is um, volume retention in that sense. So when we smile, we the, the lips spread and get thinner. When we push them in, we get the volume never goes away. So we want to emulate that uh, as well. And the same goes for the cheek. When we smile, it pushes up the the uh, um, the cheeks, and the eyes will be influenced. It's pushing up everything, and that's how you connect the the mouth with a smile a smile expression 
to the eyes. Um, when you have, uh, uh, um, it depends on the, f the, let's say, the fat percentage of your character. If you have a more skinny character that's older, it tends to translate into creases, and hopefully that's all built into your rig. Otherwise, you have to sculpt everything yourself. Um, that is, the, those, those three things are, are important to take into account when you talk about the anatomy, anatomy of, of the face. So let's talk a bit about the face and I have to manually loop this. Okay, uh, let's talk about the eyes, I was saying. The eyes. Um, quickest muscle in the body. Generally animate on one frame like a dart. One or two frame movements. Um, when you go slower than that, it starts to become very floaty and it's hard for people to recognize uh, where, where a character is looking at, for example. Uh, so eyes dart, even if I go from up to down slowly, it will always stagger. It's always trying to focus on uh, yeah, the steps in between, uh, unless we're tracking a moving object. Now, one thing to keep in mind also is something I uh, try to uh, point out with this test. When the, the eye is looking left and right, the eye is not perfectly round. It's always have this bulge on the part of the iris. And when we move that around, the eyelids are also shaping towards that. So if the eye looks left, the shape of the eye changes, and this also adds to the appeal of, of a character in animation. And eye direction is always a tricky one, especially uh, when you look uh, at through the camera. It is always an, kind of an optical illusion. You try to pose the eyes, even though physically they're not exactly looking at it, it's always uh, uh, something to graphically pose so they uh, look at the right uh, target and not be wall-eyed or cross-eyed. Brows can be quick, slower than the eyes. Usually between three to 10 frames uh, range between uh, uh, expression changes. Uh, the inner part always moves more than the outer parts. Uh, that's where the um, muscle structure comes back like these muscles are, are, these strings are shorter than the inner part. And the brows are a big part of any expression. And they're very delicate. A little bit of change on the inner brow, curling them up already gets this more worried expression. And that's something to, uh, to really be um, careful about. Then the mouth, is, I, I'm really covering the, in, it in a nutshell because I want to jump into Blender, but just to give you a bit of uh, uh, insight here, insights. Um, lip sync can be fast and blend between phonemes. We don't have to say every phoneme um, because that becomes very chattery and that's not how we tend to talk. We always blend in between phonemes. Uh, a couple of them, the M, the B, and the P, they always need a bit more attention. And they also, I always tend to uh, hook up the lip sync to these phonemes because they are very poppy and very uh, distinct out of uh, uh, other uh, phonemes. So they at least need two frames to be able to read them, but also need a bit of preparation before you actually hear the sound. You need to close the mouth and then have that uh, uh, sound hit the right, the right audio, the right time. So let's talk a bit about the appeal. It's not attractive, like appealing is not attractive. It's more about readability, about um, um, creating a more dynamic pose. So you can even have an ugly character, but still be appealing. It's really about conveying that character in that moment and trying to pose it in a way that it feels uh, believable, but also communicates the right. Uh, so it's more like aligning with the character itself. Um, asymmetry, symmetry and asymmetry. Um, symmetry is generally something that will happen with involuntary expressions, which means scare or being angry. That's always more symm uh, symmetrical. Um, as for if you want to impress somebody, you want to raise one eyebrow up, it becomes more voluntary and therefore we, we have more um, yeah, flexibility with, with uh, the expression, so 
creating a bit of offset. And there's co connectivity. Um, so when we open up the mouth, even with cartoony characters like the cat, we have a big mouth and it, 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 it's the illusion of pushing up the eyelids of the cat on the side and creating this, this uh, line of action which has been drawn on uh, the upper, the alley character, trying to create uh, extra support for, for the storytelling. Let's start animating. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, I would love to go back in time and uh, open up the uh, spring rig. And the reason for that, I have a couple of reasons. One of them is, when I saw Spring for the first time, uh, I was really inspired by the Blender team, and it got me, you know, starting to open up Blender and trying things out. It really felt like a high-end uh, character that I, w that I always thought, like, if there's a chance to, to play with it, uh, I would love to, uh, to try it, and uh, now's the time. So, we open up the rig. Um, another uh, reason for it, and let me zoom in a little bit here. As you can see, it has a lot of bones. <laughs> it is a uh, somewhat older rig, somewhat older techniques, but I think it's fun to, to jump into a rig like this because you're not always working with the beautiful Disney pre-shaped uh, rigs. This rig uh, takes a bit more manual labor that, uh, to, to make it appealing. With that said, uh, I'm working in Blender 4.1, uh, and with uh, that version, there is a new um, body, oh sorry, body, a new bone collection system. And with that, it's, and I'm not uh, familiar with the older uh, bone uh, layer system, but in this version, I can easily add new layers and have uh, them turned on and off very uh, yeah, easily. Now, this character, uh, for the use of, of, of making my shot, I did modify it quite a bit. Uh, I found the, um, uh, yeah, the proportion of the eyes a bit too big, but that's a great thing with, with a very flexible rig. You're actually able to shape the eyes, and this is all used by controls to, to get a a new character, basically, and having uh, fun with that for, for any animation test. So I, um, I am uh, only using the main bones uh, for blocking this. And the first thing what I try when, when, um, when uh, exploring a character is to try a couple of extreme expressions just to see where are the bones at and what can I do with it? So let's jump in here and I want to play secondary. Okay, so this is usually what I use for blocking, for blocking my, um, my poses. And the first thing I try is a squint. So um, actually I'm now not, uh, I'm also, using <laughs> my secondary bones just because I uh, need that for my expression. So remember that squint, for example, is not only the eyebrows, it's not only the eyes, it's also the mouth and it's all pushing that uh, together. Um, so, whoop. One thing regarding closing the eyes, when we close the eyes and we get this U shape, it always tends to translate as relax. It's like at peace or sleeping, dreaming. But when we refer that curve, we get a bit more like this, it becomes more intense or worried or, you know, closing your eyes because uh, of a bad monster approaching you. Um, so that's something I want to, because especially with the squint, I want to create that reverse curve to emphasize the pressure being put on, on the face mask. So I tend to mainly use the, the bigger bones first. And this is something uh, where you can see the, um, the, the and let me double check the orientation. Yeah, set to the local. The orientation of the bone is straight down. 
If I would give feedback to the rigger, I would say let's tilt it already so it's easier, it, it gives me already that muscle, muscular angle that we uh, covered earlier. But some, some manual labor going on here, it's all fine. And as you can see, as, as I rotate the eyebrow, there's some uh, shape gi being triggered. You see that there is a bit of deformation happening on the inner. I'm pushing it down here. Right around there. And these guys, as the corrugator, <laughs> fires more inward. Now, I cannot go too far with it. As you can see, the rotation of this bone is a bit, yeah, so-so, but we'll work with it. And for a squint, anytime there's pressure, I want to work with quick shapes, so no curvy shapes. It always tends to look more um, relaxed or, or distorted, so really try to, to pose it so it's instantly reading as a, as a squint here. So this one up a little bit like that and then i believe if i scale this in x i get a bit of uh, it's not much but get a bit of that frown lines in there i just figured out yesterday it was a thing <laughs> um and then i'll move on to the cheeks just moving it down here slightly up now um if you work with more advanced rigs, you would also get an eye socket control, which uh, controls the actual outer line of your, uh, or the, yeah, the of your eye socket to be able to shape that as well. Luckily, I don't have to. Um, pushing this up a little bit. Okay. Now, for the mouth, it has a, a little bit of an interesting take on it. Uh, it has all <laughs> things combined into one bone. So if I move this around, it's actually. Uh, opening, but even rotating, so it's uh, it's an interesting setup. Um, but let's try to create that. So again, it's very important when you start with a new rig to uh, explore it, see what the controls do, because every rig is different. Unless you work at a studio for a long time, you get the same like setup. But uh, and I don't, it's fun. It's fun to explore rigs to see what they're capable of. So I'm pushing in lips a little bit. And what I also want to do is add a bit of bulge. Um, come on. Push it up a little bit. Okay, then there's this main bone. I always love this one. This one kind of like moves the, the whole thing around. I can push it up even further, but it will also influence a little bit of the of the nose. And this is kind of like finding the balance with the style that you're working in. I would say this is a structured like anatomical character, but quite stylized. So I am able to push those, um, yeah, those those elements like pushing the nose up a little bit, even though there is a bone, right? Or like heart structure. And then there are these inner bones. And then obviously there are some more, uh, oh, not that one. Trying to, this is actually not the right bone, but anyway, I already got them made. <laughs> I made a bunch of poses for the post library and let's see what I, how far I got. Yeah, so that's way more pushed, you can see. This one is from the new post library, also in uh, Blender 4, I believe. So pushing it even further, get that reverse shape on the, uh, on the eyebrows and creating a bit more bulge even. I think I even moved the, yeah. And really try to to um, uh, support with with the squash and stretch of the of the face to 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 um, yeah uh, get the expression as as much as possible. And the great thing with the post library, and that's what I'm about to show next, is just that you're able to slide in some of these things, and even being able to when you have your selection sets 
uh, made, which I did. Select only the browse, for example, and I want to dial in a little bit of, you know, um, so that's something that uh, I heavily would recommend when you work on, on any animation project uh, to get a post library because that gives the animator uh, a jumping start, jump start, uh, to start combining poses together and quickly get to something that uh, already looks appealing and is, has been approved by the director. These expressions would be uh, something to, to get bound by and, and have uh, and not worried about the tiny little controls that um, yeah that could go easily off model let's say um, so a bunch of these as well um, so what I want to do now is well first off let me quickly uh, this has been brought up by the actual uh, the blender um, uh, animation team <coughs> at the dailies uh, last week. There was this one shot in, in, spr in spring. Let me actually open up the still of it. Uh, there, yeah. They had been struggling with this shot quite a bit to get the smile working and the, the face working and it always felt a bit um, off even though I, I liked the shot and I didn't even notice it the first time. One thing to notice when you have a, a character in a relaxed state is to have the upper eyelids rest on top of the iris. It always gives it a, a more relaxed state. If, if you have more eye whites around it, it will become more intense. So even when you smile, it becomes like I'm on <laughs> Red Bull, which I'm actually... <laughs> 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 but that's where... <clears throat> a smile gets more relaxed. So that's something to, to take into account. And again, with, with, with the original design, it has those big eyes. So it's quite uh, something that needs to be covered from one expression to another. That's also a reason why I modified it a little bit. Where are we? 3D viewport. Okay, so what are we about to do? Let me play it. And I already made some, <laughs> some marks in here for the timing. So we don't have to sp spend too much time on it. What I want to do is have the character react to uh, a uh, Suzanne hat popping out of, of the box. But what is important when animating a face, when animating a, a character, is to show every little process that goes in, in the mind of, of a character. That means that subbeats are very important before the, a character does an action. You actually do some internal thinking before you uh, uh, decide or the, a character decide to, to do something. So I want to create that subbeat in there. So I want to first let her do something else. A character um, uh, to keep, keep it alive, it's actually doing something else. So she will be looking on her phone, screen right. And then when the box comes up, something in there, in the corner of her eye comes up. So she notices it, then the thing comes out. That's the big expression. She, there, we have the, let's say, involuntary expression. Then there's the realization of the stupid monkey coming out. And then we end up with an uh, annoying look. So that's what we're trying to do here. I have to keep track of the time. So first off, let me go back to the fault here and I'll pose. So also for the body, I only turn on the, the bones that I want. And by default, I want to relax those shoulders a little bit. Turn around. Oop. <laughs> for these shots, I always, and this is a personal charge maybe, but I don't want to counter animate on every single motion. Your head is kind of like a, si a gimbal. So I want to keep full control over that and that to not counter animate every single adjustment that I do. So we're looking down. I, was, I want to see a little bit of the neck here just to get the silhouette right. Maybe do a bit of chest as well this all right something like that I just key all my bones I'm a messy keyer. 
I don't organize my keys. I like Monica's. When I opened up your shot on Sprite Ride, it was colored and everything. Or I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, so. Moving these eyes down. That. And maybe because it's something closer, I tend to just get a bit of cross eye in there. So it's, yeah, the closer you look. And then adjusting the uh, eyelids to it. So we get a bit more of a relaxed look to it. Okay. And she's looking at Instagram and she's smiling a little bit there. Now with the smile, whenever you move your corners, your lips are actually translating a lot over your <laughs> over your teeth it's a, it's never like an it, that's a thing you need to connect the whole mouth to a smile so whenever i do this this is always looking a bit strange so whenever i post it and i uh like this <laughs> sorry I'm, i can only do one thing at a time all right <laughs> only animating so pushing it slightly up but also A bit more straighten out, get the lips a bit. And then for the sake of asymmetry, moving this. Now, uh, also, these are free floating bones. And as an animator, that's something, uh, <laughs> one of the few things we want to lock. Uh, if, but only if the, the bone does, well, I don't want to go too technical, but if it's connected to actual um, blend shapes, it will maintain uh, along the, um, along the, uh, the mesh, which actually the more, more modern rigs uh, at Blender have. Um, but in order to create a little bit of a, um, how do you call it? A little bit of a gap to get, get a bit of, Sh uh, shadow on the on the on the corner there just pushing it in a little bit okay key zoom out a little bit thing comes up and i'll just put it with one pose and we'll in between and and cushion it later I just work with the key poses right now but I do take in account uh, any overlap. So uh, when I rotate the head, um, I don't do it on one axis. It's always a bit <laughs> weird. We try to um, rotate, but also open it up a little bit. <laughs> oh, that look. Um, with that, also, I try to incorporate some of the body in there. So when Ah, that's too much. Let's scale that back. Shift E, blend to neighbor, just tweaking that a little bit and then adjusting the eyes. Now here becomes the tricky part because we need to give the illusion that she's looking at the thing that just popped up. I want to just push this one over so it has a bit of that. But she just notices something and she doesn't know what it is. So it's not like keeping that relaxed state. We'll, we'll open up her eyes, uh, her, her lids a little bit here. And as this my, uh, eye has been moved over, I tend to just get that apex adjust it a little bit there. Not too much because this character, especially with female characters, their, their eyes are quite delicate. They have this specific almond shape for this, uh, in this example, for example, <laughs> in this example, for example, it has the, um, yeah, a very, um, let's say a, a Disney kind of way of, of posing the eye. So you keep that structure uh, more than you would do with more ca cartoony uh, characters, for example. And then uh, just so we're looking over, we'll adjust the eyebrow also a little bit. And 
and then adjusting the mouth. We'll revisit that one, at least we got, and then the thing pops up. Now, with the reaction, timing is key. Uh, you don't want to do it too quick. If it's on the same time, you either don't notice the pop of the, of the, the monkey coming out. If you do it too late, it becomes fake, right? It's not a real reaction. So generally, I try to maintain a, a delay of around six frames. That's where, you know, it enters the brain and it processes and it goes back to the uh, uh, the expression. So when the thing pops up here, I tend to do roughly six frames before we do the, the big reaction. And it will probably cushion a bit earlier into it. But this is where we uh, start to jump up. So we rotate our body and jump back a little bit like this. Actually, uh, not this way. I want to keep her like this, but really, it's like a uh, initial reaction to cover cover your your body with your hand, right? Uh, and and to move away from whatever is is uh, scaring you. So, at least for me, it's a thing. Uh, this arm and also create a bit of an angle to to the line of action so their shoulders are, are pointing a little bit towards the uh, towards the, the monkey but her face is fully engaged so we rotate her face and let's just dial in so one thing I, I always do when I create poses for post libraries, I never include the eyes because you're always working with the character, you're blocking it out, and then suddenly you want to apply a pose and it's like uh, looking the other way, which is uh, also includes the hinge. You never include that into a pose because you want to maintain your actual body animation uh, and eye, eye line most of the times. So that's what I don't include in there. Um, let me get the full frame here. And let me see if we, where are we? As you can see, since we were looking uh, from the side and one eye is moving further away, the eyes are now looking wall-eyed, so we have to correct this. So we move one of them here and then this guy. It's now actually looking a little bit past it, so I'll just rotate the head a little bit. So you see me looking for bones quite a bit, so I'm very much looking forward to any bone picker. <laughs> and this will be my extreme. Uh, and what I now try to do is get a bit of energy in the whole body. I want her to react. There's an extreme and then a settle. It's almost like a jump like this. So that's what I try to block out in, in the the torso uh, bone here. So I'll just go a couple of frames past it and just move it even back and then even here. Okay. Okay, so now the mouth is quite, uh, mm, I would say, generic. It's, there's no directionality to it. Um, so let's design that a little bit. And what I mean with it is just, uh, yeah, let me 
zoom in here. Giving it a little bit of an angle. And I'm fighting the, the bones here a little bit because I want to keep this straight line. It's, a, it's a quite an intense ex expression. Anytime that it's curved, it becomes more relaxed. Um, so I want to keep that tension going on. So that's why I want this, these straight lines in there. And on the other side, this is more of a 2D approach to it to create a more graphical shape. It's, it's mm, faking, faking, <laughs> yeah, uh, how do you say, a, a shape that only looks great from, from the camera, which is creating that reverse angle. And as you can see, I'm struggling to get this smooth. Uh, I'm moving them back a little bit like this. Now teeth, this also really depends on the show that you're, or a project you're working on. Um, I worked at Sony Imageworks and when you're working on a very cartoony show, the teeth are also being heavily deformed. One way of doing it is, is um, not having that straight line and it's actually complementing your, your, uh, your mouth shape. Uh, one of the reason, uh, one of the ways to do it is just whenever you have it. I would say when you're rigging teeth, get some extra bones in there for the animator so they can make nice, um, yeah, make nice mouth shapes with teeth included. So I'm just pushing down these uh, corners a little bit. Oh, there we go outside. Push that back. And I want to have this to be the extreme. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to select my face all. And on the saddle, I want to hit them all and then pushing them down a little bit. This will be my extreme. So I want to even push it further and get a little bit of a pop. Pushing these guys up a little bit more. And at this stage, I, I'm not too delicate, uh, usually. <laughs> Ad, uh, animate drunk and edit sober is kind of like the way I used to work. Still working. Uh, so push these guys up. Oh, it's... Uh, let me... Right here. Ooh, what did I do? Oh, shit. Here. <laughs> okay. It's one little bit of a saddle, so it's jump. Okay. So, coming up, scare, realization. This is a subbeat before we start to, you know, get annoyed by her little brother, you know, annoying her. Um, so I want to be subtle with it and live within the facial pose, but do a slight adjustment to, to the eyebrows. Um, so I select the eyebrows only and just dial in something from the angry face here. And probably in between, we'll do a bit of eye darting, like registering what just happened. And then the brows come in. But that's that's a, a second pass of, of blocking, I would say. Then on the realization, the face that's relaxed a little bit more because the realization is also, oh, it's just a, a, a prank. So this down 
and where am I? Here. And get a bit more roundness back into uh, to the mouth. Generally, on a first pass, I, I little things can be um, notes for myself for later on. If I put in that like root bone and just ski it like that, it gives me like already some sense. I know I'm gonna revisit it later and flesh it out more, but at least I have the scaffolding like set up. Okay, there's a bit of and and we do the same thing with the body. It tends to relax a little bit. And maybe turn back. And then I want to uh, get into the response. So right around here. Rotate back, engaging. There's no threat anymore. And really putting the, the shoulders down, it's really like, ah. Uh, wait, oh, I select them both. Like this. I want to rotate the hat the other way. So it's always great to shoot reference, <laughs> but we don't have time to go into that. There will be a talk, I think, later this afternoon regarding referencing, uh, done by Hjalti, which is awesome. Um, but for this, uh, this time frame, I think it's fine to just wing it. Um, <laughs> okay, so now I'm doing the same thing. I do a combination of different uh, faces that I already have which is eye mask, which covers the eyebrows and the eyes together. And actually, just the eyes. Geo, but also And since, th since this is more of a um, voluntary expression, it's really like communicating, I don't like this. We can go a bit more uh, asymmetrical. This, so we push this one up a little bit and make sure the eye line when she leans forward uh, is also just a little bit looking at the monkey here. Posing uh, eyelids with these kind of um, these kind of expressions, uh, I always have a rule of thumb to not go over half of the uh, iris, because if you go too low, it becomes very sleepy. Uh, it can work, <laughs> actually, it's not bad. But um, no, I tend to like cover one third, and you get you get the right spot usually. Bring it a bit of asymmetry here. Okay, and then mouth, lower face. And that's where the squint, where I want to.
So we're missing a beat here, uh, but, so I'm gonna just key everything, post this on the saddle, because what is in between, I want a bit of um, closing the eyes, going up, and then jump into it. It's really uh, almost like a sigh. It's like breathe in and then settle to it. So, and as you can see, like having a post library, it's so quick to try out these multiple ways of, of combining compress uh, expressions. It's really, uh, it, it will help you later on. And if, when you're working with a team of animators, it's even, you know, sp it speeds up. And uh, what was I doing? Oh, yeah. I blend the rotation, so I shift E, which is my shortcut for blend to neighbor, and then hit R. And it will only uh, blend the rotation. So I get a bit of a... And I think, yeah, I do the same thing. I just want the gist of it, um, of this in-between pose. Rotate the head up a little bit. And then closing the eyes. I wish I had a, <laughs> a pose for that as well, but hey, can be only so lazy. And go, I would say 80%, and then bring it back a little bit of this. I don't know, this, these are things that I don't really think about, but it's, uh, there's probably a theory around it. But. Okay, so let's see from the beginning. So now I'll um, just animate the root bone for this last section because I want to hear her to drift into it a little bit. And I will um, say, so we have, we're almost on time. Are we almost out of time? Okay, now, <laughs> guys, luckily I already did a pass on the shot. <laughs> So, as you can see, it's a bit different, but... It's really uh, trying to add those in-betweens and change the timing on when she settles, when the mouse settles, and play with that. That's also something I want to do in, uh, in the blogging stage. It's that scaffolding that I want to flesh out later. I don't want to figure out overlap and change offsets later on. I want to, especially when I show to a director, I want to make sure that it's, it's all there. So this would be uh, something, uh, yeah, I would be happy with. Um, okay, so that's about it. Quick thing, uh, can we do questions? I'm not in charge, but I Who's in charge? Yeah, I have one more minute. So if there's anybody, nagging question. Just curious about where you stylize. If you have a more realistic character, like uh, from the last thing you did before. Charge, yeah. A view of something you should totally not do for a more realistic character, like when you meet the feet, for example. Yeah. Um, yes, that's a good question. It's, uh, it, it is parallel to... Oh, yes, of course. So the question is, when you ever you were animating a realistic character, uh, what rules do you apply different from a character like this, for example, de uh, deforming the teeth for a certain shape? Um, so regarding that, uh, uh, what I mentioned before, it's more constrained to, to uh, anatomy. So the skull is more important, but also, yeah, like the teeth. And uh, hopefully the character will also be lit in a more realistic way. So you get more ambient occlusion inside the mouth. So you have less of a graphic shape that is needed. Um, 
but definitely you you will be more constrained in to the actual uh, yeah style of of rig that you're working with but with that rig for example the rigger also already put in those constraints so they work with blend shapes that only go so far that are based on on sculpts and that already is the canvas that we as animators can work with so that's that's a back and forth between either rigging or lighting and uh, see what uh, pops out yeah i think that's it